The first big CacheOS update of 2025 is here. This update took a little longer than expected because the developers wanted to wait for a new NVIDIA driver. Now that's available, the team has made some great improvements to performance, compatibility and features. So let's break it down. One of the biggest changes in this update is the improvement to the CacheOS kernel. If you're new to Linux, the kernel is the core of the operating system. It's what makes everything work, from running your programs to managing your hardware. Previously, CacheOS was already using an optimization technique called AutoFDO, which helps the kernel run more efficiently by learning which parts of the system are used the most and making them faster. Now, thanks to LLVM19, this is a set of tools that help optimize software, CacheOS can also use propeller optimization. What does this mean for you? Well, by combining AutoFDO and Propeller, the system gets about a 10% performance boost in certain tasks. This means faster load times, better responsiveness and smoother multitasking. If you're gaming, editing videos or doing anything intensive, you'll likely notice the difference. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, this update is especially important. The new NVIDIA 570 driver has been added along with support for NVIDIA's latest Blackwell 50 series GPUs. However, there is an important change. Blackwell GPUs will only work with NVIDIA's open source driver. This means CacheOS had to update how it handles NVIDIA cards on the installation ISO. ISO is the file you use to install the OS. If you have an older NVIDIA GPU, specifically anything from the GTX 10 series or earlier, you won't be able to use the special NVIDIA boot option when starting the installer. Instead, you should pick the first boot option to make sure everything loads correctly. Don't worry though, once installed, the system will automatically detect your GPU and install the right drivers for your system. If you're using a laptop with a touchpad, you'll love this small but useful change. Tap to click is now turned on by default for X11 sessions. What does that mean? Well, before this update, you had to manually click the touchpad to select things. Now you can just tap the touchpad lightly, just like on Windows or Mac OS. It's a small change, but it makes using your laptop much more convenient. If you have a Windows partition or an external hard drive formatted as NTFS, which is common for Windows users, there's good news. CacheOS now uses the NTFS free kernel driver instead of NTFS free G. Why does this matter? Well, it matters because NTFS free is faster and performs better, making it quicker to access, copy or move files between your Linux and Windows drives. If you use a dual boot setup or frequently use NTFS drives, you should see a noticeable improvement. For gamers, CacheOS has made a simple but much needed improvement. The screen saver will no longer turn on while you're gaming. If you've ever been in the middle of a game only to have your screen suddenly dim or lock, you know how annoying this can be. Now, the OS will detect when a game is running and disable the screen saver automatically. No more interruptions while you're in the middle of an intense match. If you're using an AMD Ryzen processor, this update comes with a few fixes that will make your system run smoother. The AMD preferred core feature has been updated to work correctly meaning your CPU will now prioritize the fastest cores more effectively. The AMD 3D vCache driver now updates properly in real time. Before, it wasn't registering changes correctly, but that issue has been fixed. These fixes should result in slightly better performance and stability, especially for people using Ryzen chips with extra cache memory. Every big update comes with bug fixes and this one is no different. Here are some of the key fixes in this release. If you're a video editor using DaVinci Resolve, you may have noticed that it wasn't working with CUDA when the Intel OpenCL runtime package was installed. This has finally been fixed, so you can edit video without any problems. The system's core libraries have been updated to fix a serious security vulnerability known as CVE-2025.0395. Keeping your system secure is always a top priority and this update makes sure that the critical security issue is patched. The kernel manager now does a better job of handling NVIDIA drivers. If you're installing the default Arch kernel, it will try to install the right NVIDIA package for you. Plus, there is a new check to make sure it doesn't overwrite important settings. 
Alongside these improvements, several major system components have been updated to the latest versions. Linux Kernel 6.13 NVIDIA Driver 570.86.16 LLVM 19 and MESA 24.3.4 for better graphic support on AMD and Intel GPUs. These updates ensure your system stays fast, secure and compatible with the latest hardware. If you're using Cache OS on a gaming handheld, like the Steam Deck or a similar device, there are a couple of changes just for you. Proton, the tool that allows Windows games to run on Linux, can now use natively compiled versions again. This should improve performance for some games. And there are other several small fixes and updates to improve stability. If you're already using Cache OS, you don't need to do anything special to get these updates. Just run the following command in the console. This will download and install the latest updates automatically. If you're installing Cache OS for the first time, you'll get all these improvements right out of the box. This update brings better performance, improved graphics support, bug fixes and quality of life improvements for both desktop and handheld users. The kernel optimizations should make your system feel snappier and the Nvidia changes mean better support for newer GPUs. Plus, small tweaks like tap to click and game mode improvements show that the Cache OS team is listening to what users want. If you're using Cache OS, let us know what you think of this update. Are you noticing a difference in performance? Do you like the new features? Drop a comment below and share your experience. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more Linux content. See you in the next one.